So I think what's probably useful to go into now is maybe to have a little look at Sample Navigator. So if you'd like to have a look at that. Um, so Sample Navigator is a wizard for taking uh, overviews of slides. The idea here being that if you want to be able to look at samples which have, say, a few different tissue sections on them or samples where you have uh, heterogeneous collections of cells that you want to be able to find specific areas of interest, then it's a nice way to be able to find these quickly and start to organize where you're going to start imaging. So all we have to do is click on the Sample Navigator set. We can go to the 561 laser, because that's what, one of the channels that's useful. Now, previously, I've used this in this imaging session, so it's asking whether we want I want to use the focus that was previously used, or is it a new sample or objective, so therefore consider it completely new. So I wanted to complete, consider it new because I've used the, uh, put on a new sample. And in this system, we actually have a camera as well as a TPMT. Um, these are both quick options for doing these overviews. The camera will be quicker, but the TPMT is equally pretty fast. So I'll use that as an example for now. So the first step, it will make, ask you to make sure that you have uh, your objective relatively close and in focus. There's an autofocus step that is coming up, so it's useful to make sure that this is close by so the autofocus step is quick. Next, we'll have options on what kinds of sample carriers we have. So things like circular cover slips, things like rectangular cover slips, multi-well chambers, even multi-well plates. And we're able to collect overviews in each one of these plates, depending on what's there. So these are just the ones that are available. Uh, these are just the ones that happen to be loaded on this system. There are more available that can be used. Um, OK, so we'll assume that we have a square cover slip just because we don't need to take an enormous region right now. But we'll take the full region of this to give an idea of what it can do. So now I click Next. And what we have here now is um, an example of what you need to do. So the way um, this kind of scanning works is that we're going to collect on the TPMT through the condenser. And the reason we, well, and this means essentially that we need to make sure our condenser is set up properly. So this wizard essentially tells you exactly how to prepare this by making sure the lines line up for the so that the condenser is in the right position and making sure that the apertures are open so that the light can pass through properly. Finally, it tells you to put a black cloth over your sample to make sure that this protects from the room light. In our case, we actually have an incubator, so we don't need to do that. But if you didn't, then that would be the case. So finally, we've got our focus detection step. So I'm just going to click this to start and get it going. Now, the focus detection step is an autofocus, a software autofocus. So essentially, what it's doing is it's looking for the brightest plane that it can find. Once it's done that, it will check with you to allow you to decide whether that's fine or not. What I typically find is it's usually pretty good on terms of focus, but I usually can't help myself but do a little bit of playing. So here we go. So you can see we've got a reasonable plane of focus, but I'm going to have a little play just to see what we can get out of it. So I think that's OK. So now I click Finish. And now the wizard will take over. It now has all the information it needs, and it will actually start to collect the overview images that I want. So we can see how it's defined where it thinks the cover slip is already, and it's now starting to scan the whole area. So you can see now the outline of our kidney slice quite nicely. We can stop this at any time if we want. So now I've pretty much collected the whole area I'm interested in. I'm probably going to stop, but I'm going to let it go a little bit longer so I get this edge. And there we go. So now I'll stop it here. So now we can clearly see the entirety of our, our sample. And now we're able to look in and decide which bits are actually of interest to us. So this is a really useful way to generate a really quick overview where you can see the entirety of your tissue section. It's actually a good way to impress our <laughs> users how we are cool. It is a very, very quick way of doing it. Anybody who's imaging any kind of tissue, it's a really, really good way of doing it. Because now from this, what I can do is I can move up. What I'll do is I'll move up to the 20x because it's the highest resolution air objective I happen to have at the moment. So that's a convenient one to use. Um, but what I can do now is I can define tile regions in here. I can decide, OK, well, uh, I'd like to draw some contours, or maybe maybe I want to draw a box and I want to look at this little bit over here, and it'll set up some tiles there. But I'm not done. I, I want to look at some other things, so maybe I want to draw a contour around an area of interest, so perhaps maybe this bit over here. So I just want to capture this over here, and I've got a tiled region that's defined over there. So now I'm ready to go with those, and I can start to do fun things with these. Um, what I would probably start to do initially is I can move around and start to check whether these are in, I'm actually in the areas I think I am, whether my focus is good. And one of the nice things here is if I drag this one over to here, 
is that I can have options here on how this will be viewed. So if it's uh, if new tab is selected, when I start going live or continuous on top of this image, it'll open a new tab and I will see my new or continuous. This is the one that I don't use so much because I find that actually separate container and tile view is much more fun. So the separate container means when I start a continuous or a live, I will maintain a view of this, but I will also open a container next to it that will contain my continuous or my live image. So I'll still be able to move around on this map that I've generated, this overview map, but I will have a nice image of exactly what's going on. And finally, in the tile view, which is probably my favorite, um, it will simply, this blue box, which is our field of view, um, will become our live or our continuous view. So when I start operating this, I'll actually be able to see pretty much immediately um, where I am, and I can just move this around as I like. I'm able to move this around anyway as I like, just by default clicking on different areas. So if I'm interested in checking something that I think is interesting, I can look. If I'm defining tile regions and I want to make sure that I can actually see what I'm interested in at high resolution, then I can move around and check, and it's absolutely no problem. And you just double click in order to... Yeah. Just double left click and that will move you around, no problem. You're also able to kind of move around on this image as you like in terms of viewing. So if you click down on the scroller itself, then you grab the image and you can move it around as you like. And then you use the scroller to move it in and out of um, zoom as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is quickly pop back to the locate tab. Now, if Vladimir, you can quickly check my focus for me. So because we've gone to a much higher resolution objective, what we've done is we've gone from a 2.5x that has a huge depth of field, has somewhere around 100 microns, and we've gone down to a 20x, which has a depth of field of about 6 or 8 microns. So the lightliness of the focus is perfect between these two is unlikely because they just there's such a huge difference between them. With the higher object, with the bigger, well, with the higher magnification objectives, it's usually not such an issue. But with, the, with this kind of difference, it's difficult to be sure. So you usually have to just check to make sure we're in focus. You are right. Yeah, we usually small correction. It's usually only a small one, but it's much easier doing it in the locate tab than it is actually using it in Confocal. So now we can hop back and we're ready to go. So maybe I want to check where my tiled region is. So I'm going to move to the center. And if we run a little continuous, so now I'm in my tiles view. So my continuous window will literally appear in here. And if I min max this, then we can see exactly where we were. So now we're able to have a little look at the level of detail I'm getting, make sure I'm happy with my Z plane. So the one you found below me is really nice. So I think that's good. So because I've changed this now as well, what I want to do is I want to click on this tile region. So I have it selected here and make sure that I set current Z. Now what that means is that the Z region for this entire Z plane will be set based on our current position. So we don't um, use what the 2.5X thought was our Z position, which was slightly different. Okay. So next thing, what we might do, so with this tiled region, it's not enormous, but it's a, of a reasonable size. Uh, actually, what I should do is I have some old ones left over, so I'm going to close those for a moment, or at least not consider them. Um, so what I could do with this now is um, it's a reasonable size, so it's about 50 tiles, and it'd be quite easy to make it quite a few more. But what I'm going to do is with samples like this that are typically mounted in um, a refractive index matched um, mediums, is things like definite focus don't really work very well because they rely on an index difference. So when you... Um, when you're trying to maintain a focus across the whole field, it can be quite difficult and you end up having areas that are not really in focus. And especially if you miss it, if you have quite a thick tissue sections, you may just end up with bits that missed the bit you were interested in. So a nice way to get around this is to use focus surfaces. So down here we have focus surfaces and support points. So what we can do is we can add multiple support points. So we, I have set up four columns and three rows, so I can distribute these. And I get a group of support points that I can now use. So if I click away from this and then click on the specific support point I want, I can add these and move these around to exactly the locations that I want. So wherever is of interest to me or wherever I think it would be best distributed to make sure that I have um, a good focus. Now, once I've done this, I can go to verify and I can jump to one of these positions. So I can move to the current position and I can go live. And if I actually zoom in so I can see, and then I'm in max it so I can see. I can check my Z plane and go, yeah, okay, that's fine. Set Z and move to the next one. Have a little play, make sure this one's good as well, and so on and so forth, until I'm absolutely happy that everything I'm about to image is going to be exactly where I expect it to be. And yeah, that one's good as well. And now that's taken me off to another tile region, the little one that I set up down here. 
And as we can see, that's not quite in focus, but if I have a little play, then there we go, I've got that one in focus as well. So because that one's a bit smaller, I don't actually need to set any support points in it because that will be a Z that's consistent for all of them. But for the one above, which is bigger, it's quite useful to have these support points. The, all the positions are slightly different. If I actually look at the list of support points, um, then I can see that they're slightly different. So if I click this, there we go. So we can see the Z positions for these. They're all relatively similar, but I have picked, I do have a bit of a variety in there and it means that I'll see exactly what I want. So what I would normally do is, if, especially if I had bigger sets of tiles, is I would make sure that these um, sit along the areas of interest that I have. So um, along the structures. So perhaps within something like this along the Gamera line. Um, okay, so then I'd be able to then set this up. What I could even do now with this as well is I could set up Z stacks that would be run alongside this. So each one of these positions could also be um, have Z stacks instead of just single planes. But for now, that's not something I'm going to show but it's simple, it's simple enough to set up. Okay, so I think 